pasta dough with the egg has been resting and now it's ready to get started. And what I want to make with this pasta dough is some ravioli. So I've already gotten started. I made my filling and my filling is consist of ricotta cheese and also parmesan cheese, some oregano, some salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil. And as you can see, I've already started with a few of my ravioli. See that right here. So let me show you how I did it. So one thing is when you were working with without a pasta maker <laughs> and you yourself are the pasta maker, it does take a little bit extra time and patience and a little bit more arm power to roll out the dough. But it is fun and it is worthwhile for sure. So what I've done is I have like just a rectangle long piece of dough here and I'm gonna roll it out. So I have my rolling pin, I'm gonna coat it with some flour and then I'm just gonna start rolling. So I will roll it lengthwise first, just back and forth, starting in the middle and then working my way out. So what we want to do is just try and create an even surface for the dough to work with. And we're gonna pick it up often to make sure that it doesn't stick to my board. So as you can see, I have a lot of flour on my board because I really don't want my pasta dough to stick, right? We've been working so hard on it, so it would be a shame if it stuck to the, to the surface. And also, if I'm rolling back and forth, but I'm also rolling out to the side. Because to create my ravioli, I need some length and I need some width. So, and you just really put some muscle into it. <laughs> kind of like a workout for the kitchen, you know? <laughs> you get your food and your workouts. So, and I'm just lifting it as I go. Unless you have a really big counter space, you'll find that it's kind of difficult. It starts to get a little difficult. So what I like to do is I like to just cut it in half when it starts to get a little bit too long to work with. So just like that, you see, take it one half, and that's better. Now I can work with that a little bit easier. No, because my counter space is not an industrial size counter space. So I need to be creative and find new ways to work with it. So just rolling it back and forth. To make sure you have enough flour on your surface. If you need to stop at some point and be flour, don't be afraid to do that because you just don't want the dough to stick. So I am shaking up a little bit as I lift and being pretty delicate with it because the more you start to roll it, it starts to get very thin, which is what we want, right? Like we don't want the pasta to be super thick, so it is important that it does get thin, but we don't want to be rough with it. We want to be gentle with it. So just keep rolling. Apply some pressure but also some sensitivity. <laughs> I know it's an interesting combo. Right? There's nothing like homemade pasta, fresh pasta. I mean, if you've never tried it before, you are in for a treat because once you finish, you will be amazed. It's just so light and delicious and the texture is just very different. <laughs> than this dry store-bought pasta. So, although it's taking us some work, it will definitely be worth it. So, as you can see, now I've got, ooh, there we go, a nice piece of dough to work with. So, this is thin enough for me. Um, it's starting to get a little bit too thin where it's, it's a little bit too delicate for me. So, I'm just gonna dust off a little bit of some of the flour. Set my rolling pin aside, and now I'm going to cut off some of the loose ends. So I'm trying to make it as easy to work with as possible. So for me, I like to remove some of the spaces that I don't need. And I actually learned this from a baker who bakes cat fur, and I was watching how he makes it. It's this delicious delicacy that's made with a really, really thin dough, and then with sugar and pistachio and clotted cream. It's delicious. <laughs> and I was amazed at how he was working with the dough. And I really learned a lot from him about how he used the workspace to cut off the pieces that he didn't need in order to achieve the best outcome. So what I've done here is I've kind of cut a strip for my ravioli. So I'm going to take a little bit of my ricotta and parmesan mix a little spoonful and I'm just going to place it right in the middle part of where I want 
my ravioli to fold over, which in this case is just right before the end. It's about an inch before the end of the a piece of pasta. And then I have some water that I'm just going to take and just run my fingers along the sides. And the water is going to serve as the adhesive. It's the glue. It's gonna it's gonna be what holds the ravioli dough together. <laughs> And then I'm going to take my other side and just fold it over, just like that. And I want to make sure that I leave enough room on the top and the bottom so that the ravioli has enough room to work with. And then I just cut off the bottom piece so I have a little excess dough here. Then I take my fork, I dip it in the water, and I'm just going to crimp the sides, just like that. Almost like you're crimping for like peanut butter cookies. <laughs> Kind of just like that, or for like a pie crust. And if you have the ravioli cutter, you could certainly use that. I personally don't have it, so I just am using a sharp knife and then just a normal table fork, and it works just great. <laughs> so once it's all crimped together, you'll have a nice little ravioli just like that. So I'll place that on my cutting board. I have a cutting board with a little bit of flour on it. Flour surface. I add a little bit more here. These guys don't stick until it's time to put them in the pot of boiling water. So let me do another one. So again, I'm going to cut the strip just like that. And I will dust off a little bit of the flour, place it down, take a little spoonful of the ricotta, and you can use whatever filling you like. I just am a big fan of ricotta. And then fold it together. Oh, add a little bit of the water first, our adhesive. Work out here. A little bit of the water all around the filling. So remember, the point is the water is the adhesive. It's going to be what sticks, keeps the ravioli together. There we go. And then I'm just going to fold over the other side just like that and cut off the end piece that they don't need still leaving a nice space between the ravioli on both sides it's about three quarters of an inch space uh, i mean it's will vary depending on the size of your ravioli but for mine it's about three quarters of an inch and this is important to make sure that the ravioli doesn't explode because hey it's happened <laughs> that's not so great but after all your hard work ravioli explodes in the boiling water so and then I am crimping the sides with my fork dipping it in water as I go and perfect and then you have your perfect little ravioli so I'm gonna keep going until I use up all of my filling or dough whatever comes first and then I'm gonna enjoy some delicious ravioli the rest I'm gonna lay out on a cookie sheet in the freezer let them freeze, and then I'm going to toss them, take them out, top them, toss them in this block bag, put them back in the freezer, and it's going to be a great treat to have on hand. <laughs> Fresh ravioli. So there you have it. Now you see the end of what we have from our pasta dough uh, to do this delicious ravioli here with a pasta filling. So it's amazing. You could totally make many different types of pasta, whatever you have on hand or whatever you decide to make. But this is my delicious uh, ravioli here with ricotta and parmesan filling. So I hope you love it and I hope you give it a try. And happy eating, happy cooking.